And today I'm going to show you how to configure a layer 3 IES service on top of a VPLS um, to deploy management services to our routers. So I'm what I'm doing right now is I'm managing all my nodes through my local machine and that's being done with the use of MPLS layer 3 and layer 2 services. So this node right here is the local host cloud which is my machine and it's reaching into this layer 2 switch um, literally that's all this is a layer 2 switch and then right now I have this connection which is emulating a serial connection into my router 5 so if I do a show buff you can see I have an address configured here um, and this is reachable through my local machine Now, if I get rid of it, I am no longer able to communicate with my device. So you can see the ping stopped. So let's go ahead and put that back for now. Well, what I want to do is be able to get to it from uh, through my other routers in a routed VPLS. So let's go ahead and start. I'll just move this here out of the way and I'll show you from router one. Uh, just an example here. So here is my layer three interface on this IES service in a routed VPLS and I can ping that through its DNS name in my host file and I'll show you that too. So here's my host file, and what we're going to do is we're going to assign 192.168.33.15 to router 5. Again, this is my local machine communicating with my GNS3 environment. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'll close out of this because I am able to use SecureCRT since, again, my machine is literally controlling my uh, emulated routers. Um, so here's router 5. So first things first, um, I, I have a full mesh of SDPs at my core. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy router 5 with a spoke SDP and that's going back to router 1. So this makes it a quick and easy deployment to, in order to not create a full mesh between router 5 and the rest of the core. So we're going to have an SDP, and that's going to be our transport tunnel between the PE routers. Uh, so uh, just the thing I want to elaborate on is, so when an MPLS, or when a, just a frame arrives through a spoke SDP, which is going to be from router 5 and 1, vice versa, it it's flooded throughout a VPLS, out every SAP and all the SDPs. So if there's a fully meshed SDP, in, in the center here in our core. This opens up the possibility of a loop because uh, all the frames are forwarded at all the other spoke SDPs. So that can get messy. So what we want to do is utilize the behavior of a frame uh, arriving through an, a spoke SDP, but in the core we have a mesh SDP, uh, fully mesh SDP core. Uh, basically what's going to happen is the, the, the spoke will arrive uh, the frame will arrive in a spoke SDP and it will be forwarded out the other mesh SDPs but it won't be forwarded out uh, out of the other mesh SDP so frame will get here it will forward out one mesh SDP but it, that's where it'll stop it won't be re-forwarded out and create a loop um, so any frame that's destined for router 1, from router 5, through a spoke SCP will be flooded out the mesh SCPs on router 1, and any frame that arrives at, the, at any other of the routers will be flooded out the mesh SCPs and then forwarded out, out of the spoke SCP back to router 5. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, I, this kind of took me some time to understand and the reason why you would want to use a spoke versus a mesh SCP so, all right, let's go ahead and start here. So from router one, 
what I want to do is just create an LSP back to router 5. So in here, I don't have an LSP. Nope. So go ahead and LSP to router 5. Five and CB ten 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 five and enable traffic engineer and CSPF algorithm and we'll go ahead and just use a primary path. It's gonna be a loose loose path. Uh, no shut this guy. Okay. So there's that and we're gonna configure an STP, a spoke STP. Um, that will be tied into the VPLS, but let's just create the SDP. So what I've been doing is going in SDP 1 to 5. VPLS create. And the far end would be 10, 10, 10, 5. And since we already have the LSP that we just created, that's how we are going to tie this in. So there it is, 2 router 5. Uh, the path MTU, I've just been sending these in 9190, and no shut. So let's see, there it is. So the SDP will not come up until there's an SDP back. So show service SDP, you can see that it's down. And it's we got a targeted LDP session. And let's go ahead and see. All right, so we got that. Now... Let's go ahead and jump into router 5. So we're going to configure. There's not much on this box yet. So configure. We're going to configure our customer. And you, you want to keep this even across the board. So make sure your customer matches on all your other routers. So customer 555 create. I'm going to say this is my management customer. And uh, we're going to create our VPLS. And again, this has to match configure service VPLS, customer 5555, create. So there's my VPLS. Nothing on it. Nice and simple. So, first things first, we're going to uh, create this uh, VPLS to be a routed VPLS. So, this will allow a VPLS instance to basically be associated with the layer 3 IES or a VPRN interface, which we'll configure later. We're going to configure an IES interface on top of our VPLS. Um, so, configure VPLS. Let's go ahead and allow. There it is. Now we have a routed VPLS. And there's what we we're going to do here. Well, we got to go back actually. So, again, we got to create an LSP to router one. So, I'm not sure what I got in here. Uh, to router six, to router nine. So, LSP to router one. And to SPF. Loose path, no shut. So, there's our LSP. And now we're going to create an SDP service SDP. And so again, just to make things easy when you're looking at it. So configure service SDP 5 to 1 and PLS create. Um, the far end is going to be 10, 10, 10, 1. That's the system interface of router 1. And the LSP that we just created to router 1. And the path MTU 9190. Um, let's do an info on this. So, no shut this guy. So, if you remember, this guy was down before, so it should be back up or it should be up now. We'll just give that a second. Two router one. Okay, so there's the LSP. Okay. So uh, one thing I want to point out too is that the the router VPLS this will allow for the host to communicate with other hosts within the same subnet and that's in the same layer two domain there that we just created and these will communicate with each other without the use of a router but they will not communicate outside of the subnet unless there's routing configured so keep that in mind. 
All right, so show service SDP figure five nine. So show service SDP fifty nine detail. Target LDP. Transport tunnel down. Okay. And and okay, we just have to wait for this to come up. Uh, show service SDP. Okay. So, not up yet. Size up. Let's go ahead and move on. So, we're going to configure this. Okay, so now that we have our VPLS. Oh, I'm sorry, it is up. Uh, yeah, it's up. This other side's up. This side's up. 51. So, it just took a minute to come up. No big deal. Uh, let's see. So we have our VPLS. So let's go back into our VPLS. And one thing you want to make sure you do here is you're going to name it. So service name. Management. Because we're going to call for this VPLS into the IES layer 3 interface that we'll create here shortly. Um, so we have to do a spoke, so spoke SCP, so 15, I'm sorry, 51, and bind it to this VPLS, create, and that's it. So while I do this, I'm going to create, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a packet capture going. Okay, so you can see what's going on here. Um, and then I'm going to get a ping going. Oops. Ping 192.168.133. And it's going to be router 5, so we're going to do 15. Alright. So. Let's see where we're at here. Where are we at? So here's our VPLS. So we'll, we got the spoke. We got the service name created. Um, there's no SAP needed because this is a layer two part of the service, which is communicating through that spoke. We already created it. So the SDPs are up. So there should be communication now. So if we go to our router one, service VPLS. Okay. So let's just make a spoke off of here. Spoke SCP 115 108. No shot. Okay. Now, uh, no shut this guy. So let's go back and now we're going to create our IES. Uh, yes, customer. So this is our layer 3 IES interface. Nothing in here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and create the interface. We'll call it layer 3. Create. We're going to give this an address, which is going to be this address here, which I've already pre-configured in my host file of my local machine, 33.15. So. 24. Um, and basically we're going to add it to our VPLS. So inside this same interface, add the VPLS by the name. Make sure this matches. Go back. Service. Okay. Info. And then give this a service name too. Node. Layer 3 management and go ahead and no shut this guy. And there it is, you can see it starts pinging. That's great. Now we can sever the connection through our emulated serial connection um, from our previous uh, management layer 2 switch that we have here. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of this. No longer needed. 
and now I am able to reach my node. So that's that's great. I mean, that makes things so much easier, and everything's configured through my local machine. So this spoke is communicating back and forth between router one, and router five, and then the spoke is is forwarding all the frames out the mesh SDPs. Um, but they don't create a loop since this is a fully meshed S, uh, spoke uh, fully meshed SDP core. So there you have it. Uh, layer three VPLS, or I'm sorry, layer three IES service on top of a layer two VPLS used for management services.